Hi everyone, so in this video I'm going to show you how I've made an Ethereum logo out of casting resin using a silicon mold. So for people that don't know Ethereum, Ethereum is a coin in the cryptocurrency world and it's quite popular at the moment and I just liked the logo of it. So that's why I picked this one. It's not like a personal investment ID just to, to pick this one, but I just like the, the emblem they have. So if people have other IDs for other coins that I should do the emblem of, just write it down in the comment below and I see what I can do. So what I did here is I just traced out the lines that has the base plate, uh, where all the beveled edges will be put on top. So I just put it down and just scratched the lines in between with uh, razor blades, just to know where I have to put all the edges on top. So the reason I've used carbon fiber is because I just have it, have it laying around in the workshop. It's quite stiff and it's pretty thin, so you can be pretty accurate making uh, parts using carbon fiber, but you could do it as well with other types of plastics and uh, sheet metals and so on. So what I did is I just uh, rubbed with some 80 grit sanding paper just to create like a good bond between the super glue and the upstanding uh, bevels coming on top. Then I clean it with some acetone to degrease it. And then I just add the bevels on top just to create like the 3D shape that we are looking for at the end. So it's just a matter of bits, um, of taking your time, getting everything right. How I did the measurements, it's more by calculating everything. So it's a bit of math you will have to go through. Uh, but once you have all the pieces, it's pretty easy to put together. So I've cut them out and then I'm using some hot glue to bond the upstanding um, like uh, plates just to create a 3D shape. So it's pretty obvious that it will be pretty difficult to get everything right uh, on the uh, tight edges you have on uh, on that shape. But I knew I, I could just fill it up with some Bondo or uh, epoxy in this case. So I'm using the epoxy resin from Easy Composites. Uh, it's a laminating resin. It's pretty okay by, by price. And uh, I just used it because I had some other projects uh, laying next to it where I had to use the laminating resin. So I just put it on top uh, and hope to fill all the gaps in between. And then it's just a matter of sanding it and uh, repeating every step uh, till you have like the perfect shape that you're looking for. So in between the layers, I just sand it with 80 grit. I'm not too scared to grow through the fibers because this will just be the master model that will be used to cast the silicon mold. So I'm just applying a second layer then a third layer was added. I just sanded everything and just then put a layer of clear coat on top just to fill any pinholes that were left. So what I'm doing here, and I wouldn't do it again, so um, let this be like the first remark, is I'm using some MDF boards to place the button on top. So this will leave you a, a little edge at the end in the mold. So if you have an overflow of using too much resin, it will still be catched inside of the silicon mold without having it all drip off the mold. But that will be clear when I'm casting um, the silicon mold. So what I'm doing is just adding some double-sided tape to stick it on to the MDF board. Uh, the reason why I, I wouldn't use MDF board again is because it sucks up like a little bit of the uh, silicon and the MDF will get a bit fuzzy and will make it a bit more difficult to remove uh, it at the end. But it turned out quite okay, but I, I wouldn't just do it again. So what I'm doing here is I'm putting it back on an other plate uh, to have like the, the casting plate where I'll be casting on. So I'm just making some edges around the parts I would say like you can take three centimeters above um, the part that you're going to cast. So this is some fluid boards um, and it's self-releasing in most cases. Uh, obviously with silicon you don't have to apply a release agent, agent because it will be self-releasing on its own. Uh, one remark is the way you cut the fluid boards is pretty important because you have like all the inner channels in one direction and you can use that to make some curves on uh, on your parts so i'm just i've just got some 
thin stripes with the uh, razor blades just to create like the the bands that I needed and then I just put some hot glue all around and then it's just a matter of leveling everything to get the casting ready so just taking some measurements and here I made a mistake so um, I've made it for the calculations for a square so I should divide everything by two because this wasn't um, a square so um, that was the first mistake but don't be it wasn't a big mistake because I used it to cast some other um, parts that I had to so what I'm doing here is I'm using the additional cure silicon rubber from easy composites and it's like it's a bit better than the conditional silicon uh, I think it's called CS2 or something like that because it's a bit more stiff it's when done properly it will give you a bit more castings out of the mold so I've used uh, a mixing tool but the resin is pretty thick on its own so I've I've broke off the uh, the little tip of the mixing stick uh, so I did everything by hand at the end um, so what you can do is just I like I did in the other video with the YouTube button I just added some color uh, so it will be a bit more clear when you're casting clear resin into a silicon mold that is clear or transparent. It will be pretty difficult to see how deep um, you are with your resin when you're pouring. So it's a ratio of 100 by 10. So here I've made 2.2 kilograms. So you add 220 grams of um, the hardener so then it's just a matter of mixing it well uh, you can use the two cup stirring methods with methods when you just put mix everything in one cup you just transfer it into the other one and then you put it back and then it's just time to degas the resin so you could do it without degassing it but it will be like in results you will get much better results when you're degassing the resin so I think it's pretty important to do it you will see it it will rise up uh, keep in mind it can rise up till 10 times in volume before collapsing so make sure you're taking a big cup to uh, do the gassing in the uh, of the silicon so here is just a matter of pouring it i'm just pouring it from one side in a thin stream just to avoid air bubbles so i would advise you to put like two two to three centimeters above the um top part of the part you're casting uh, just to have like a strong mold at the end so then you wait 24 hours you can put it into the oven if you want just to cure it a bit faster and then it's just a matter of demolding it so here you can see I had some problems with the demolding and that was caused by the MDF um, sticking a bit too much and not releasing uh, good enough because it was the silicon was soaking a bit through the MDF because it wasn't sealed so another thing you could do is just seal the MDF or use another type of plastic uh, below it so I was going for I would say black clear transparent part but what I'm always doing with my first part is I'm casting some uh, P6 it's a polyurethane uh, casting resin that will go quite quickly so you can demold after I think it's around 30 minutes mostly I leave it a bit longer um, but with that you will remove any uh, excess that you still have into your mold and well you will have your first part so you'll see if the results are good so this is what I meant with the overflow of the resin so thanks to that MDF board we can just let it um, go a bit over the size of the part so the good thing by doing a, a, a polyurethane casting first is first of all it's pretty cheap to use you can do a lot of castings and it will also remove all the MDF that was still stuck uh, on the silicon like you can see on the right lower part now in the video so pretty good results and then I went for an epoxy casting using the uh, infusion resin from easy composites I'll do some other castings with some other videos uh, about this also about making a cheaper mold because this is quite a volume of silicon that you will need um, but this is like semi transparent I'm pretty happy about the results so it's just a matter of trimming everything uh, at the ends and there you have it so you have your ethereum logo uh, cast it 
and ready for more casting so you can i think you could pour around 50 parts out of out of that mold so keep in mind epoxy resin isn't the best for silicon molds um but i'll do some other videos so i hope you liked it and see you guys in the next video